afternoon, great afternoon. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures, staying on our intentional course, and that is to continue to pursue the Lord uh, and to apprehend that which we have already been apprehended. God has has already redeemed us, and we are want to press toward him, draw near to him, and continue to be transformed. I'm going to, we've been studying about the church, but this tape, we're going to talk a little bit about soul winning and what it means and what 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 uh, are we equipped with to win souls for Christ. We're going to see uh, the whole purpose of salvation is to uh, redeem souls. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But there's a transformation that must take place inside the vessels. As Jesus said, you must be born again. The, the fleshly man and the carnal-minded man is not going to heaven. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, in heaven, there's no flesh and blood. And so it's, we're in the transformation stage where those who receive him are now moved in from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And the song, as I was going through... Um, Things thinking about um, not being driven by commotions and emotions. And of course, the, the emotions come in because when you, according to the scripture, depart from evil, you make yourself a prey. You become the light in the darkness, Christ shining through you. And uh, this world is in darkness and God has, has sent forth his uh, uh, vessels as light and, and also as salt uh, making it uh, uh, palatable, making it ch just we are in the sense uh, of representing God in this world. And so the song, which I want to play a little bit, I don't own any rights to this song as I was uh, experiencing some warfare. <laughs> this song came into my mind. I had another song to sing uh, about bringing in the sheaves, but this one came in my mind. As a, and my sister's been sending me a couple of songs this morning, which has really ministered to my soul. And I think when you talk about making songs and melody in your heart, it's important for us to stay in a joyful, because it's with joy do we draw from the well, and it's the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. So you have to kind of work on this joy. <laughs> You have to kind of work on being joyful. But I want to play a little bit of this song. It's a Reverend Mel Milton Brunson, Lord, I'm available to you. And I'm going to play a little bit of I don't owe the rights to it. And I'm going to upload it. Yeah, this is what we're called to do. My voice. Yes. Sing your praises. Never heard. God needs you and you need me. Hearts been broken. So many people to be free. I'm available to you. You feel that way? My will, I give to you. You say, use me, Lord. I don't own the rights to this. I'm just playing this here as our introduction to the scriptures. All the tunes.
We're going to stop it there. And that's what it comes down to. I'm available to you. My hands, my eyes, my feet. And what I've been studying, in, this, in order for these conversions to be made, with so many souls are still not free. And the Lord had been speaking to me about uh, not being driven by the commotions, uh, a state of confusion and noise and, and, and disturbances and annoyances and fuss and rebellion and uh, turbulence. Uh, hallelujah, because God is not the author of confusion. And emotions means a natural instinctive state of mind um, one's uh, uh, deriving from one's circumstances, which you know I'm very emotional, y'all, okay? But he says, don't be driven by this. So I begin to look at um, soul winning, and the, the uh, we are considered to be the fruit of righteousness. We're going to read some scriptures that are talking about what God is doing in us, leaving us here as examples of his love and, and, and being the light and being the salt, and how it's contrary to our natural nature. Thank you, Jesus. Our natural nature that we inherited from the first Adam is completely different from the nature and the, and the, and the, uh, uh, the nature of God. When God comes in us, hallelujah, he talks about humility. He talks about if you want to be great, you, you're serving, completely changing us and our state. So we're not driven by commotions, and emotions, because many times the walls and stuff that's happened is dealing with commotion and confusion and disturbances and turbulence and it just. But what God is with the song said, "Use me, Lord, I'm available to you." So we're gonna let you hear that. So we're gonna pray and we're gonna go into this word because we're talking about soul winning, and we're gonna deal with being the planting of God and the fruits of righteousness. And how that righteousness, when he talks about his kingdom is not of this world, his kingdom is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom of God, which is completely different from the kingdom of this world, is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, the kingdom of God. Okay, so God is using us and therefore we are a reflection as of the kingdom of heaven. That's why he talks about not to um, to to strive with one another and how to to uh, love. He he emphasized love as a commandment, and you wonder what I mean. How much power can love have over hate and, and anger? Because that's the natural. But I was talking to my husband, and um, generally, by with before we are born again, the first instinct is to take up sticks and rods and but he said in the scriptures that it will not be by by a power nor by might but by my spirit says the lord so the spirit of god which is the fruit of the spirit love joy peace temperance long suffering meekness gentleness all the fruit of the spirit is manifested and evident in the vessel and we kind of wonder how is that going to overcome all this other stuff <laughs> all this fleshly stuff but the problem is see the flesh brings destruction and decay and death. But God's fruit bring life. So we see how life and light is overpowering death. How, and my God, as Jesus was hung on the cross and refused to come down off the cross and, and subjected his uh, flesh to the destruction uh, or the... the, the uh, the, the, the taking on death and sin and then springing forth into life because God is a spirit. And I know for us who are in the flesh, we know clearly like, you know, I, I mean, somebody slapped me. I'm thinking about slapping them back, but that's the old way. And I, so I got up this morning when in, as I was in spiritual warfare right here. <laughs> At first I was feeling hurt. Then I said, you know what? I'm available to you. And we have to be available to God whenever the season come. 
we have to be quiet and be still. So we're going to pray quickly. This is, hopefully I don't do too long. It's already going to 10 minutes. Father, we thank and praise you, first of all, for you working in us, walking in us, talking in us. We hollered, greater one is on the inside. We thank and praise you, even in the midst of the psalm that you told your disciples, uh, O ye of little faith, hallelujah, that you are on board, you are down in the very depths of our soul, and we thank and praise you for the peace which surpasses all understanding, keeping our heart, minds, and soul, even in the test of trials that we will go through. For all these things come upon us, you said, and think it not strange. To come upon us, oh God, these fiery trials, hallelujah. But we thank and praise you, and we have been tried and tested, and we will come forth as pure gold, yielding our body, soul, and spirit unto you. For we are available to you. Our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our hands, our being, Lord God, we commit them into your hands. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going quickly into a couple of scriptures. Psalms 126, and it just has six verses. And I picked this one first as the song of the green. It said, the Lord, when the Lord turned Again, the captivity of Zion, when he turned. So this is in past tense. That means that the, the works have already been finished. And it says, clearly the scripture said, Jesus was slain from the foundations and the works have already been finished. And we just have to enter into that place, enter into that rest. We have to enter into it. This one particular scripture talk about when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. So this really is a process we're going through. It is already done. The, the blessings are there. He talked about the children of Israel. He said, even though it was already finished, I need to find that scripture, that they would not enter into that rest because of unbelief. So what we are striving for is already there. It's already done. It's already accomplished. Y'all don't have to make it up. It's already set. Thank you, Jesus. And we have to end to it. It says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathens, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. Wherefore, hallelujah, we are glad. Thank you, Jesus. So this is really telling us what we are striving for is already there. God don't have to make it up. It's already done. He said it's finished. It's finished. Then again, our turn again our captivity, O oh Lord. Turn us. He has to turn us. Hallelujah. He already said, I prepared a feast for my son. Come and dine. He said, come. He's telling us, turn us again. Turn our captivity, O oh Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They, he that goeth forth weeping and bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. So we are, we who are currently here are now on this side of eternity. We are still in flesh. We We have been born again, but we're still clothed in flesh. We're still clothed in mortality. Me, my kosher, we have to be uh, transformed. Hallelujah. And the transformation can come just like this through the rapture. Or we can die in Christ and then be called up to the rapture. So either way, we have to be changed. The mortal must put on immortality. Thank you, Jesus. That's why it says, turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And see, we talk about sowing in tears because when you're on this earth, you are going to experience times of affliction. You're going to experience times of rejection. You're going to go through because you're in a kingdom. Thank about kosher. You're in the kingdom of this world. You're in the world, but not of the world. And he said clearly, what they've done to me, they're going to do to you. And if, if you was of the world, the world would love you. But you're no longer of the world, therefore the world hates you. And you can feel it. And you can experience it. And you can tell how to do the, the where you are. Hallelujah. He that soweth and weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. And now we're going to Proverbs because he's talking about we when, when God has brought us into the fullness of our salvation. Yeah, he has translated us already from darkness to light, but we're still immortal. We're still mortal beings. We're still in flesh. We're still going through in this realm. 
because we're still in the world, not of the world, but in the world. Proverbs 11, which we're going to read most of Proverbs 11. And it says, this is talking about, I'm going to skip through a, uh, uh, Proverbs 11. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just way is his delight. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly, but with the lowly is wisdom. That means the humble. Those who see God tells us to take a humble position. With the lowly is wisdom. Because we talk about the opposite of pride and lowliness or humbleness. That's why he said, with the pride cometh, uh, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. Okay, because the time God going to deal with the proud, he's going to deal. And he tells us about with the lowly is wisdom. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors, transgressors shall destroy them. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, nor but righteousness delivereth from death. So God's talking about when you are clothed in righteousness, which is the righteousness of Christ. You're clothed now in the righteousness of Christ, not thinking about riches, because he said riches will not profit you in the day of wrath. When God sends his wrath upon the earth, I don't care. They're not going to cover you. They're not going to protect you from what God is going to bring upon the wicked. But righteousness delivers from death. And this is the righteousness of Christ being clothed in it. We're talking about souls here. It says the righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. So God is exalting righteousness. And deep back, this is the righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own uh, naughtiness. Hallelujah. We're going to skip down. We're going down to it. said, um, by the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is over thrown by the mouth of the wicked. He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor. So he's talking about the conditions of people. A tale bearer revealeth secrets as talking about behavior. We're going to skip down to verse 19. Well, let's do verse 17. We're still in the 11th chapter of Proverbs. The merciful man does good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubles his own flesh. This is all about behavior and talking about being lowly or being exalted. Okay. And it says, as righteousness tendeth to life, righteousness tended to life. And this righteousness that we have as believers is the righteousness of Christ. He bore our sins and carried, he was dressed in, in, in our, he took on our sins. It was imputed unto him and his righteousness was given to us as righteousness tended to life. So he that, um, so he that pursues evil pursues it to his own death. They that are of a forward heart are abomination to the Lord, but such as as upright in their way are his delight. So now we're going to Isaiah 32. You'll read all of that chapter of Proverbs. We talk because we talk about righteousness and being as opposed to being covered with, you know, I got money and I, whatever other stuff. It's just not going not to help in the day of wrath. It's not going to help. We're talking about being ready for God to use us. So we take a low position. We take a humble position. He said to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. So we're humbling ourselves and not uh, going tat, tick for tat, back and forth. You know, as, as, the, as, the, as, the, as the railing accusations come, we keep in our mouths. And Lord, <laughs> help me to keep my mouth, Lord God. And put a watch before my mouth that I send not with my tongue. So Isaiah 32, and it says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and the princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covet from the tempest, as a river of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. And the eyes of them that are that shall see shall not be dumb. So God has said, when the king shall reign in righteousness, Christ will reign the earth in righteousness. 
Now we want to be clothed in righteousness ourselves, the righteousness of Christ. We want to have on the attributes and the things that re resemble God. So we don't fall into the position of uh, needing wrath, okay? The eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall not shall be uh, shall hearken. The ears of them that hear shall hear. The heart also of the rash. I look up the rash means this. Uh, when you look up rash, it says um, they're kind of like cruel. Uh, the, the it says the heart of also of the rash shall understand knowledge. When your heart is is bitter or 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 tough, I looked up the word rash because I felt what what does it mean by rash? A rash. Um, I'm going to make sure I read it. I meant to write it down. I've been busy doing other things, but rash means displaying a proceeding for lack of carefulness, consideration of the possibility of the consequences. Okay, he said the heart also of the rest shall understand knowledge. So God going to bring those who, who do not understand the consequences of their actions. He going to bring them to understand. He said they're going to understand knowledge. And the tongue of the stammerer shall be ready to speak plainly. The vile person, the vile person means the person is just, just terrible. Vile. I looked that up too. Okay, I looked up the vile person. Okay, they're doing uh, uh, evil things. Okay, the the person who's vile, okay, that vile person is going to understand. It said the vile person, the uh, the vile person shall be no more called liberal. Now, they, right now, people are doing all kind of dirt, dirt and, and do all kind of mess, and you still say they're good, right? But this says here that the vile person, morally bad and wicked. Because uh, we see here now, the wicked is being exalted. And the vile person is being exalted. He said they will no longer be called liberal. Okay? They will no longer be called because they're gonna they, God gonna say what they are. He said the vile person will speak villainly. So where they put on like a little um smiling faces and putting on this this display that they're not, they're not, they're kind and loving and they got this facade that's not for real. God said that they uh, will, uh, the vile person shall no more be called liberal, nor the cruel said to be bountiful. For the vile person will speak villainy and his, and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord to make empty the soul of the hungry and he shall cause the drunk drink of the thirsty to fall. So when we talk about God going to make clear who is his, People who have been touring around pretending, well, I'm really a Christian, and underneath they are vile and cruel. He said, this no longer, they going to, you're going to see their true colors. That's what I get. You're going to see their true colors. You're going to see their true colors. What they are, if they're a snake, they're going to be a snake. And they ain't going to be able to hide it anymore. They ain't going to be able to hide that they're a snake. They ain't going to be able to hide that they are, a, they're not going to be able to hide because he didn't put this word in here. Okay, the time is coming when the king shall reign in righteousness. Okay. And it says, the vile person will speak villainy and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and utter error against the Lord to make empty the soul of the hungry. The instruments also of the cruel are evil. He devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speak is right. Even when people in need and they're speaking right. We, we, the whole earth is for all of us, not just for y'all. Okay, it says, they devising things. But the liberal devises liberal things and by liberal things shall he stand rise up you women so he goes down and talk about um i'm gonna skip down a little bit to verse 16 okay uh, verse um 13 same chapter 32 13 says upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars uh, and upon all the houses of of joy in the joyful city because the palaces shall be forsaken and the multitude of the city shall be left and the forts and the towers shall be for dens forever a joy of wild asses and pastures of flocks until the spirit be poured upon us so to talk about the outpouring of the spirit on israel and out which god been pouring out his spirit you know on all flesh since the day of Pentecost, because the Holy Ghost did not leave. The Holy Ghost has been poured out for the last two years, two days, or the two thousand years. The Spirit has been poured out on whosoever will, and and, and 
asking God, his spirit is becoming upon him. Okay. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness and righteousness remain in the fruitful field and the work of righteousness shall be peace. The work of righteousness shall be peace. So that's the work of that Christ. He is our righteousness. He is so God is working righteousness, but it has nothing to do with strife and jealousy and bitterness and hypocrite and, 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 and deceitful and none of that. Okay. The work of righteousness shall be peace and the effects of righteousness, quietness and assurance. So when work, when the work of righteousness is finished, which is bringing in peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Okay. And it says clearly. My people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in such dwellings and in quiet resting places. When it shall hail, when it shall hail, coming down on the forest and the cities shall be low in a low place. Blessed are ye that sow beside the waters and send forth thither the feet of the oxen. So we are, this talk about the time of the harvest. When God is talking about when he get ready to gather in his harvest, his wheat, into the barn and the rest of these things are going to be trodden. They're going to be weed and they're going to be trodden down. It says, but read currently, according to this scripture, blessed are ye that sow beside all waters and send forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass. So we are working and laboring and treading out the corn, treading out the corn. That's what the scripture is saying. Okay. Now we're going to Isaiah. I'm going to be, I'm going to stop this soon. Isaiah 61, 61. This is all talking about how do we become soul winners? You taking a humble attitude. You taking on the attributes of God. Thank you, Jesus. Not God where the disciples say, we don't call on fire and burn. No, no. We take it on the attributes of Christ. And it says he was meek. He did not open his mouth because, see, God is transforming things. He is changing things. Isaiah 61 uh, verse three, um, and it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had known, this is what Jesus was speaking to proclaim liberty, uh, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance. So he stopped at the acceptable year of the Lord because the acceptable of the year of the Lord is current. It's these two days. It's these days that we're living in now when God wants everybody to be saved, to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give to them beauty for ashes and all of joy for uh, mourning, the garments of praise for the spirit. We are actually in that season and time now. We are in the time when he says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the acceptable time that God is putting us and dressing us for righteousness, dressing us, hallelujah, for eternity, dressing us, hallelujah, to be able to stand before him, dressing us, hallelujah, and hallelujah, and the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness. We are the planting of God, the trees of righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified and that they shall build the old. So that's what our job is now, taking on the righteousness of Christ. We are called the planting of God, bringing forth righteousness, not strife and not jealousy, not all of that. Okay. Read all of Isaiah for 61. It says, um, uh, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven is that, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified and they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many. That's what we're here for. That's why we're here. OK, that's why we dress in the righteousness of Christ. And the strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen. We talk about the we just talk about the feet of the ox and the ass treading out. Okay, they shall be your plowmen. So we are here, Gentiles and Jews together in the body of Christ, uh, the ox and the ass treading out. Hallelujah. His debacle shape. He says, and the sons of the alien, which means the Gentiles, shall be your plowmen. And your vine dresses, but you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you 
the masters of your God, the ministers of your God, and you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourself. For your shame you shall have double, and for your confusion, we say God is not the author of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double, everlasting joy shall be unto them. For the Lord loveth judgment, I hate robbery, and for burnt offerings, and I direct I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. So we see God is moving. God is working right now talking about what he's doing with the Gentiles and Jews who are in the body of Christ. I got a little text here from my son, y'all. <laughs> okay, so this is today when we say, use me, Lord, to show someone the way. Please enable me to say my storage is empty and I am available to you. And it's available in the very act that people are trying to provoke you. Okay, remember you're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Okay, and that's going down to um, the fruit of righteousness. Corinthians talk about the fruit of righteousness. I think we got time for that too. The fruit of righteousness. God, we are the planting of God. He has planted us here and we are his uh, our trees. We are his, his uh, representative. Okay. Second Corinthians 9. And it says, hallelujah. For as touching the, the ministering of the saints, it is super vicious for me to write unto you. But Paul begins to tell them how their charity, yet have I sent the brethren. So he's talking about their generosity to the people of God. We're going to skip down to verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man according to his, his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly and not of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. For God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have sufficiency in all things, may abound in every good work. So God wants us to continue to work, laboring and giving and doing. Not only giving finances, we give finances, but give our time, give our talents. Whatever we have, we are sowing them for God. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So every time you let Christ reign in you and you're pouring out whatever way it may be, it could be just be giving a smile when people have just cussed you out. Okay. You are letting your light shine. It says God, um, the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in every thing to all bountifulness, bountifulness, bountifulness which causes through us thanksgiving to God for the ad administration of this service not only supplies the want of the saints but is abundant also by many thanksgiving so when when you show is it show someone the way when you show Christ and you you don't go railing after the flesh to them and you are quiet and you submit it to God, it says eventually they're going to say, in fact, there's another scripture that says, when you, when those who are coming against you, the time will come when they, your witness will be a testimony against them because you, you held your peace and say, Lord, you know what this situation is about and you're right here with me. And so it says, and by their prayers, it says, um, um, let's read this again. While by the experiment of this ministration, this means your giving and your caring and the love that you show, they glorify God for your professed subjection. Your professed subjection. You becoming subject, okay, unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. So God is talking about us being clothed in Christ and being able to represent him even when it's, it's, it's painful. Okay. It's, it's those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Okay. So a lot of times you're going to be sowing in tears. James, the third chapter. Then we're going to close out. Okay. And it's, it's getting up there. This is, came to me 
And this song, I'm going to put it put on it so you can get it. James, my brother, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses, talking about the tongue. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts things, boasts great things. But now, but how great in matter a little fire kindles. So God is talking about not only in our giving, but our words, all this here. So we put on the righteousness of Christ. We talk about lowly, being in a humble position. That's what I'm getting, okay? And believe me, <laughs> you'll get tried, y'all. Okay. The tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therefore... Bless therewith the tongue we bless God, uh, even our Father, and therewith we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed the blessings and curses. My brother, these things are not to be. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet and bitter water? So that's why God, I mean, he's talking to me anyway. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive trees, either a vine tree, so... Can no fountain yield both salt and sweet water? Who is a wise man endureth with knowledge, endowed with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness. Didn't I tell you coming down to meekness of wisdom? But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glorify not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, uh, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality, without hypocrisy. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. So we know it's talking about good fruits without partiality. Well, you know what? The fruit of the Spirit is, is in talking about love, joy, peace, temper, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness. It's talking about the fruit of God. Okay? And it's without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace to them that make peace. So we're closing out. This is all about getting out ready to be soul winners, not responding to commotions or emotions, but letting the righteousness of Christ Rest ruling about in our hearts. Okay, I hope this has been good to you. I will put the scriptures down. This was is, this is what's happening to me, y'all. <laughs> I tell you, I'm gonna share it. So, Father, we thank and praise you. We are walking out our salvation, working out our own soul's salvation with fear and trembling before you. We are all going to go through times in our conversation, and whether we be impartial and I love it, whatever we're doing, we are being examined whether or not we have cloaked. Clo fully being clothed in Christ, dressed in thy righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Help us to be prepared, O oh God, in every area of our lives. Help us, O oh God, set a watch before our mouth. Will help us not to be partial. Help us not to uh, be hypocrites, Lord God. We pray that your perfect will be done in us. For we know that those who sow in tears shall reap with joy, bringing in the sheaves, dressed in the righteousness. And in this righteous, uh, 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 Position in us, Lord God, it will many times bring persecution. It will many times bring tears. And we thank and praise you for the word declared that we sow in tears, we shall reap in joy. We thank you for the word taking root in our lives and transforming our minds, heart, and souls as we commit ourselves into your hand and count it done. Amen. Amen. So <laughs> we've been busy morning, y'all. Please continue to pray. And I thank God for this song. I'm going to pray a little bit more and more. I don't hold the rights to the song, but the song bless me. To show someone the way, enable me to say my storage is empty. I'm going to pay it up. I'm, I'm going to get it, y'all. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. Uh, and I am available. We got to be available to God in the supermarket, in the highway, in the street, in the church. You know, we got to be in a home. Because we want souls to be saved here, so the enemy will come in. He told Jesus, told he said, "You think I came to bring a, a peace? I came to bring a sword." But that causes 
issues, and, but you still want the souls that you encounter, whether in your home, in the street, in the neighborhood, you want them to see Christ. And you want to be dressed in the righteousness of Christ. And you want to give him glory. Okay? And all that you pull out, God is definitely going to re re return double for your trouble. So please continue to pray for me as I continue to pray for you. And I'm going to upload this song. And uh, the few songs my sister gave me that was really blessing me today. Because I needed it right in the middle of all issues. <laughs> I just stopped and listened to that song. So we got to keep a song in our heart. Okay? Continue to put uh, your trust in the Lord. Stay in the word. And yes, you will be, when you are tested and it seems hard, just remember a song and go off and talk to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm available to you. And the Bible said we are counted as sheep for this Lord. So we are counted as sheep. We are counted as a sacrifice for God. So this is not un, unheard of for you being under attack. But God is crucifying the flesh and strengthening you in the spirit. Okay. Be blessed. Push the like button and encourage somebody to come along. Amen.